In this video, I'm going to show you how to allow users to enter input from your web page, and then we're going to process it a little bit. And in the next video, we're going to show then how to take that information and pass it on to MySQL. So before I do that, I want to point out something here in that we are writing HTML to create web pages, and then we are using PHP to process. And there might be a question of, well, why are we using these two different languages? Well, for one thing, they're processed in very different ways. So the HTML code is on a server somewhere. So in our particular case, it's on a server at our school. And then when somebody visits our web page, that actual HTML code is sent to their browser, and their browser processes it. So it's processed locally, and that's called client-side processing. But if you want to take information the user provides and check it against a database, that database resides on the server. So then you need something, a program running on a server or a server side script. In that case, the language you often use is PHP. You could also use other scripting languages like um, Python, but the most common um, up till now has been PHP. Uh, I should say, at least up to now. Python is making some ground, but PHP is still, I think, uh, the standard. Okay, so there's client-side and server-side. Client-side, HTML, server-side, PHP. All right, so we have some kind of standard HTML here. We have a head, uh, not much going on there, no title, and then a body, and the body says login, so that's this. And then we have this form, so this is something new. We have a form, and here is the end of the form down here. And in this form, I'm going to ignore this stuff here for a minute. We print out username, so that's this. And then we put a new line, and then we have an input. So this is what creates this um, entry box right here, is this input command. And then we have a break and a password, another input box. And then we have another input that's actually a button. So how do we create these things? Well, we specify two different things in here. We specify the type and the name. So the type in this case for the first one is text. I'm just going to type in a username. And know if I do something like that, then we get Darwin. And notice that whatever I type, it echoes back to the screen. So again, if I type in D-A-R-W-Y-N, it echoes that to the screen. And if I type in password, then something very different happens when I'm typing in characters here, then you don't get this stuff echo back to the screen. So there's different types you can have. And if you want to learn more about different types, then the internet is out there and Google. And they'll be happy to tell you of the multitude of types that one can have. Um, down here, I have a submit type, which creates this button. And then the name here is, when somebody types this information in, we want to store that information. We can't just let it go off into the ether. So this is going to be a variable user that when somebody types in, when I type in Darwin, then user will be set to Darwin. And then um, this name down here, password, will be set to whatever password I type in. In this case, submit just as the name of the button here. I could have typed something else in and changed the name of the button. Okay, now, so this creates those, then these entry boxes and the submit button. When I actually hit submit, then up here, the form says, oh, an action has occurred. You've hit submit. Call this with method post. Now, Nano has done some weird coloring here because this quote here in white depend or is with this quote here. Um, but anyways, okay, so what happens is when you do an action, you call a PHP script. So this is the beginning of a PHP script. Here's the end of it, the semicolon. And then we have a lot of stuff going on in here. So basically at this point, you're just going to echo this. And, you know, it would take a lot more coursework on PHP to get into other ways to do this. 
Now we're going to call a PHP script. It's pretty easy. If we wanted to, I could just put a file name inside the quotes here. Um, so I could do something like login.php. It would be a PHP file. And put that in quotes. But if I do that, when you hit submit, then over here it would take you to a different web page. So I don't want that to happen. I want to stay on the same web page when I hit submit. So this is what all this um, code here is going to do. So there's a few things going on. First of all, dollar underscore server is a variable array that's maintained by the server. And one of the things in, in this array is PHP self is the name of the file that's currently being um, executed. So in this case, it's going to be login.html. So what we're going to do is we're going to return the name of the file we're executing for this PHP. And so what that says is, hey, I want you to call the PHP code in the file that you're already in. And if you notice down here, we have some PHP script. Okay. So all of this is set up to call the PHP script in here. We could now we could create a PHP function and call that special and then call that function. Uh, maybe we'll do that in the next video. But for right now, I want to just call the code and the PHP code in here. Now, so again, dollar underscore server um, is an array of information about <clears throat> what's currently happening. And one of the things in there is PHP self, which is the name of the file currently being executed. This HTML special characters, <coughs> excuse me, um, is here because uh, clever hackers, aren't they all clever? can type in HTML scripts in this username, and if they're smart enough, they can make bad things happen. So this HTML special characters processes the inputs and makes sure that nobody's trying to hack your web page. So very similar to things we've seen before. And so basically just use HTML special characters and you'll be safer. Not safe, never safe on the web, but safer. Okay, now there's two methods you can use here. Method, um, there's a get method and a post method. And it's just how do you pass the information along? With a get method, you pass information along through the URL. Uh, you've seen this before. Um, probably when you visited a web page, you type something in, and when you hit enter, then all that information is part of the URL. Uh, I think when you, well, I should have checked this, but when you order something on Amazon, for example, then whatever you're looking at um, has its own ID and that identifier becomes part of the web page URL. That's a get method. If you're asking people to type in a username and password, you probably don't want that to then become part of the URL, which would be available to anybody. So we're going to use the post method, which uh, keeps things more close to the vest, more secret. Um, okay, so now when we hit submit, then it's going to call this PHP code inside our own file. And this PHP code is fairly simple. It's going to check. Now, we're using the post method. So there's a variable, dollar underscore post. This is pretty common naming convention when a program has a built-in variable, and we've seen this before in Python, you often put underscores in the front of that variable because then it's, it's a variable that folks are unlikely to type in themselves. And variables in PHP begin with a dollar sign. So the dollar sign means this is gonna be a variable. Underscore post, again, is just, we're using the post method. The underscore there is, you know, so, Somebody else, if they created a post variable, wouldn't conflict with this. And this post variable is then an array, and it has an array of this information, user, pass, and, well, submit, I suppose. So what we're going to do is check to make sure that the user and pass, these two things here, were set. And if it's set, then we're going to create variables that contain that information. So this just gives us a PHP um, <coughs> short, short shortage. <laughs> um, I guess a little more user-friendly way of accessing those variables. So I'm going to call it username and password again, and variables in PHP begin with a dollar sign. 
So I'm just setting those equal to these variables, and then I'm going to print them out. So I'm going to print the username. So this is in quotes. This is actually going to print out to the screen, and I'm going to print the value of username and the password. So, I mean, over here, it doesn't look like much, but there's actually quite a bit going on. This code is being processed on your computer, and then you pass it over to the server, and a server processes this. And so we are now ready to take this information and pass it into a MySQL database using these variables. So we're, we're pretty well set here um, to start beginning processing user input.